Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I just want to quickly cover how to use Terraform in a production environment and by that I mean move outside your local development uh, playground if you like and actually move it up into a more production ready solution so that you can use it in things like Azure DevOps pipelines and you can collaboratively work on it with other um, Terraform engineers and things like that. So yeah, let's just get started. So first of all, I'm just going to give a quick view on how we currently use it, uh, you know, sort of out of the box. So let's just get Terraf um, Visual Studio open and let's just create a new project. Uh, let's create a new folder. Test one. When you have one, select that. So I've already got Terraform installed and I've also got the Azure CLI installed. So if we head over to the Terraform Azure provider. So we're going to authenticate to Terraf um, to Azure using the Azure CLI in this first example. So this is pretty much the, the basic standard way to do it. Um, everything is local. So let's have a look and see how we do that. Uh, so yeah, we're going to log in with the Azure CLI uh, and then we're going to create a Terraform provider block for the Azure RM provider. And we're just going to leave it like this. So let's just grab that actually. Let's grab that. We're going to need that in a second. So the first thing we're going to do is let's get a terminal open. And let's log in, AZ login. So that should prompt me to go over and log in with my credential. So this is connecting to my Azure tenant, which is done. So we can see there that I'm logged in with this identity. Uh, this identity actually has full contributor rights to this subscription. So we can pretty much do anything we like now with Terraform. Uh, the first thing we can do is just create a provider.tf file. So this is where we're going to store our connection information to the URM provider. So that's what I just copied from the website. So this should be enough to, for us to initialize our project. So let's do a Terraform init. So that's connecting to our tenant all successfully. So we're now ready to start building some. So let's just start with a main.tf and let's just build a resource group. So resource, let's call it RG, uh, resource group. No, that's not right. Sorry. Azure RM resource group. And it's going to need a name. Let's just call it test one. And it's also going to need a location. Let's put North Europe. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's create that now. So let's do a Terraform plan. Hopefully this won't take too long. So only a resource group. There we go. So it's going to create one resource group called test one. So let's apply that now. Terraform apply the TF plan we just created. Okay, there we go. So let's head over to our Azure and let's have a look and see if it's created that resource group. There it is. Now it's called test one. So it's not there yet. Let's do a refresh. Yeah, there we go. Test one. So it's created it. And if we have a look at the access, uh, the activity log, we should see, yeah. Um, I was hoping to see that it would have been created by me, but it hasn't kicked off yet so let's leave that for a second so so what we've done here is we just logged on 
with our local credential, we've authenticated using Azure CLI and it's allowed us to connect to our subscription and provision this resource group. Um, what you can see from here though, is that we've got this local TF state file. So the TF state file is a critical component. Um, it keeps track of all the resources, how they're provisioned and their current state. Uh, imagine it is like a snapshot of our infrastructure at a particular point in time. So it's quite important that file. The problem we've got at the moment is if someone else wants to work on this particular Terraform deployment, they're not going to know about the state file. So the first thing is we need to move that file to what's called a remote state. So it can be shared with locking and things like that to make sure there's um, stability in that state file. And the other thing we need to think about is at the moment we've authenticated with our Azure uh, Z login credential. So this account. Um, which is fine if I'm working locally, but if we're going to put this into an Azure DevOps pipeline, it's not going to be able to authenticate with my credentials. And, you know, I could, but we don't want it to. We want it to authenticate in a different method. So we're going to switch this over to be more DevOps friendly. Uh, so that's what we're going to do next. In fact, I think probably the best way to explain this is to switch over to our whiteboard and start doing some sketches. Okay, so let's start. So at the moment, we've got our computer with me sat there. Um, we've got, we're using the authentication type of Azure CLI. Uh, we've got the state file local. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to change this over to a service principle. If I can spell correctly. So in order to do that, we need to create an Azure AD app registration. That's an R. Uh, we also need to get some access to the subscription. So it needs contributor rights. Um, that will have a client ID. And it will also have a client secret. So this service principle is effectively a username and password, but it's a, an object in Azure AD that you can assign permissions to resources. Uh, so for those that aren't familiar with that. Um, for the state, we're gonna to need to use remote storage or remote state. And we'll put that into a storage account, an Azure storage account. Uh, it's going to need a container to store the state file. That's a blob container. And obviously there's going to be some access keys. So because we're going to be using Azure DevOps pipeline in the later on in the video, um, we're going to need to store, I mean, there's a lot of secrets involved here. So we've got the client ID, the client secret, the access keys for the storage account. So we're going to create a key vault to store these. And then the DevOps pipeline or the DevOps um, project will go and connect to this key vault to get those secrets. So we're going to create a key vault. And in this key vault, we're going to store secrets. And they're going to be, so we're going to have the client ID, the client secret, Um, we're going to also have the tenant ID. That's, uh, let's write that again. Uh, what else are we going to need? We're going to need the storage account keys. And there's going to be two of those because there's one and a two for the rotation. So yeah, so that's, it's basically this stuff that's going to be stored in there. Um, what we're also going to need to do in this key vault, this service principle is going to need to have an access policy created. 
because it needs to have access to view those secrets. Uh, what else are we going to need to do? And oh, yeah, obviously, of course, as these are natural resources, they need to be put into a resource group. Right, I think that makes sense. Uh, have I forgotten anything? So we've got the Azure CLI, state file, service principle. It's going to need an access policy to a key vault, and we're going to create some remote storage. Oh, yeah, and then obviously we need to update our configuration to use the new um, service principle and remote state. So let's do that next. So we're going to initially kick this off by doing all those components manually. We're going to configure them all using the Azure portal. Uh, if you stick around towards the end of the video, we're going to automate it so that it's repeatable so that you can provision this for each new project um, really straightforward uh, and consistently. Uh, obviously, depending on how you work in your organization, you may only need to do this once and you can use the same process for all your um, projects. But um, in most organizations, you know, typically you'd have a different team of people, so you probably need a different set of... Um, uh, bootstrapping. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is create that resource group. So let's um, just create that. Uh, so bear with me while we do the, the manual piece. It's going to be a bit boring and a bit slow, but it's a, we kind of need to do it so you fully understand before we start doing the automation. So what I always do is call it a resource group, name of the project. So let's call it project five and what I like to do is, because it's the management element, so that where we're going to store the storage account, the key vault, I always tag it with management at the end. And we're going to put it in North Europe because that's where I am. We're going to create that. Create. And while that's running, it shouldn't take too long. And there it is. And in here, we're going to create a storage account. This is going to be for the remote state. That's the standard Azure storage account. I'm going to place it in our resource group we just created, and I'm going to call it SA error form. Uh, let's call it SA project five TF. It's unique, and we're going to again place it in your store. Keep everything else the same, standard, everything the same. So let's. We don't need to connect it to any network at this point. That's a bit advanced for this particular video, but you may want to put this on a private endpoint. Um, but in which case, then you have problems with uh, setting up these your DevOps. So it's a bit more complicated. So we're just going to leave it public for the moment. Let's just go straight to review and create. Okay, while well, that's creating. Let's give that a refresh. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, still creating up top here, deployment in progress. All right, that's that done, supposedly. The portal's doing its thing again, so let's go back and just go back in again, because that seems to... Where is it? There it is, finally it's arrived. So in here, we're gonna to need to create a container. I'm just gonna create a container called TF state. And that's where we're gonna store our state file. Okay, um, what else do we need to do? So we've got our state file, uh, we need to create a key vault. So let's do that. A 
again we're just going to put a standard key vault um key vault project 5 tf so for terraform i'm going to put it in north europe again um pricing tier standards all good soft delete and mm, uh, days of vault pressure protection disabled um I wanted to change the access configuration, so let's quickly go back. I want vault access policy, and I'm going to add myself in as a be able to create and review. So let's create that. Okay, while that's running, let's prepare a notepad. What we're going to do is just going to record all the things that we're going to need to stick into the key vault. So these are the, the values that we're going to put in the key vault. So obviously the storage account keys, tenant ID, client secret and client ID. Now we haven't created the service principle yet, so we don't have those. We can get the tenant ID and we can get the storage account keys. So let's grab those. Um, so in our let's grab the storage account keys first. And uh, where are the keys? Access keys. So obviously I'm going to be deleting this afterwards, so don't try and use them. Let's grab that and place that in storage account key one. And let's grab the second one. This makes it easier for us to populate the key vault in a second. So we also need a tenant ID. And we need the client secret, but we haven't got those yet. So let's let's now create the service principle. So we need to create the so we need to go to Azure ID for that. Um Azure intro ID as it's now called. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just create an app registration. Um new app registration, and I'm gonna call it sp dash project five dash DevOps. Um, this is the account that we're going to use to, to pretty much do everything with. Um, and we're going to just keep everything standard. So we've got our client ID now. So let's put that into our notepad. So our client ID. Um, we've got our tenant ID. And we also need a client secret. So we need to generate one for that. Let's create a new secret. Um, let's call it Terraform. And we'll grab the secret from there and let's put it into our notepad. There we go. So we've got everything we need. So we now need to just create these into the key vault. So let's do that next. So there's our key vault. And we want to create them as secrets. So we're going to manually, and I'm just going to change the window so we've got side by side, so it's a lot easier. So the name is going to be client ID. And these names are important because we're going to use them with the same values later in the variable. So keep the names the same and consistent. And obviously, the value of that is that. Create. So we've got our client ID let's do another one and this time it's going to be the client secret great and you get the idea we do the tenant ID I'll explain how we use this later but right now just know that all our key information is going to be in this key vault and when we set up these your DevOps um, project and pipelines, it will import these values from that key vault um, and obviously consume them without exposing our private information at runtime. Let's create storage key two. This is the last one. Ooh, let's get that right. Ooh. 
Okay, so we've got our key vault populated with secrets. Uh, we do need to create an access policy. We need to allow that service principal to be able to read um, those keys. So let's create a, an access policy to the key vault and we need to be able to, I was gonna select all because I'm lazy, but it only needs to get list set and delete probably uh, on the secrets. And we need to assign it to our service principal, which we call SP project five DevOps. So that principal now has access to read the secrets in our key vault. So these can now be read. Um, what else do we need to do? Uh, we also need to give that service principal contributor rights to our subscription. Otherwise it's not gonna have permissions to do anything. Um, obviously you could be a bit more narrow with the privileges it has, but in our example, we're just gonna um, add it as a owner or contributor, sorry. So let's give it contributor and we're gonna select our service principal. I'm going to sign that. Let me just go back to my notes. Yeah, so we've created the, yeah, better sign that. So we've got our remote state prepared. We've got our key vault with our uh, secrets. We've created an access policy and created our service principal. So we're pretty much ready to go. We just need to update our Terraform code now to actually make use of it. So we need to configure our provider to use um, backend storage. And we also need to change the authentication method uh, from Azure CLI to service principal. All right, so firstly, we're switch over to use the remote state that we've just configured for our storage account. So let's modify our provider. Uh, let's do some Googling and work out how we do that. So Terraform remote state Azure and see what we find. Um, store Terraform, there we go, it's a Microsoft article. Let's have a look at this one. Um, configure environment, backend state, we've done all that. Right, so this is what we need to update. So let's just grab that and it goes under the, uh, it goes after the provider block. So stick it in there. Right, so resource group name, well, we know what that is. If we go back to our, it's, so that's our resource group where our remote state storage account is located. Um, storage account name, let's grab that. Put it in there and container name. What did we call the container? Um, TF state, TF state, and let's give the key is the, the name of the file, so we just call it let's call it um, production.tf state. So I think all we need to do now is probably just do a, another initialize and it will hopefully migrate the back end from our local remote uh, local TF state to remote TF state. And do you want to copy the existing? Yes. So we should now be using remote state. So if we head back over to our storage account in here, we should now have our production.tf state file. So any changes we do now, uh, it's going to store it on this remote state, which obviously allows us to use your DevOps pipelines because they have access to this once we've set it up and also for other Terraform developers to, to work on the same state file. So we're still actually authenticating through Terraform using the Azure CLI login, um, so my current credential. So we now need to switch it over in our code to actually use the new service principal account we've set up. So let's work out how we do that. Uh, so authenticating. So we're now going to switch over to service principal and client secret is the method we're going to use. So let's go and have a look and see what we need to do. So the key bit of information is 
here. So all we need to do uh, by the looks of it is just add these to our provider block. So let's grab that and go back to our TF um, to our code. Uh, where was that place? I think it's under your RM provider, isn't it? Yeah, under features. Okay, so let's stick those in there. Now, obviously, we don't really want to hard code all our secret information in this section um, for obvious reasons. And obviously, because we stored them in the key vault later on in the next part of the video, we will import those from the key vault. But for now, let's set up our code so that it uses variables instead. So let's create a variables file. Variables. Oh. Dot tf. I don't think I spelled that book right, but it doesn't matter. Um, what I like to do is prepare our input so that when we put it into the DevOps pipeline, the variables are consistent, um, and then it will pull those variables from the key vault with the same name. So we've already got those in our text file, so let's just paste them in there. So we've got these variables. So we've got the client ID, this client secret of the uh, service principal, and obviously our tenant ID. So if we now go back to our provider block, let's put those as variables instead of our client ID, of our client secret, of our tenant ID, and obviously the subscription ID we didn't actually put in the key vault. So let's just grab that from our subscription. There it is. So let's put that in there. So we've now switched over to use the different provider. Uh, the fact that these exist, it's going to use this in preference over the Azure CLI. Uh, the problem we've got at the moment, we haven't actually provided the values. So if I was to do a Terraform plan now, it's going to prompt for those values because they're obviously variable inputs. More space there. Yeah, so now it's asking us to in input the values. So we could go through, paste all those values in um, and do it the painful way. But you may have seen in my previous videos, if you create a file called um, Terraform TFRs, so we can we can store our values in here so that it feeds them in automatically during the runtime. Now, obviously this file is a sensitive file, so it should never leave your, your workstation. Do not check this file into your DevOps repositories or anything like that, just keep it secret. We're only using it for to keep it simple for us um, to be able to feed in those variables. So we actually already have the values we need to put into this Terraform tfrs file so if we go back to our notepad um it's these three they should just copy and paste over nicely so these are the values so if we now do a terraform plan it should allow us to connect to our jaw subscription using that service principle and hopefully we've set it all up correctly where that service principle has the rights it needs so it's able to connect uh, and that's to the remote storage for the tf state and also to the tenant. So let's just check that by changing something. So let's uh, let's create another resource group. And I'm going to call it test two. So plan for that. It doesn't like that because I've got two of the same name. So let's just call it RG. So what we've done so far is we've production readied our Terraform deployment. We haven't actually created any Terraform to deploy, any infrastructure or resource to deploy with Terraform, but we've prepared it ready to start using it in a production environment. So let's just quickly apply this. We'll check it out. So we should we end up with a new storage account, oh, sorry, resource group called test two. 
if we head over all going well we should see our additional storage account uh, resource group which hasn't appeared yet but it did complete successfully so it's just a bit of a time lag with the portal so we'll just wait a few minutes and see if it comes back there it is so as you can see preparing terraform to be used in a production environment i.e not locally on your development machine anymore requires quite a lot of effort it requires key vault it requires a service principle with a secret it needs permissions to be signed to that service principle you need to put secrets in the key vault you need to set up some remote storage and switch over the back end to use the remote state um, it's quite a lengthy process as you can see this video is almost half an hour long um, i was hoping to carry on on this video and actually show you how we can automate this um, so that we can reuse the same code for each project we instantiate in the future so we can do it consistently and quickly going forward but i didn't want this video to be too long so i will do it in an another video which will be uploaded shortly uh, yeah, so I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. It really helps if you do. Um, and wait for the next video, which will be up very soon. Till then, take care.